Hello, welcome back to AP Computer Science. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, and we're going to be going over the free response questions for last year's exam. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be covering question one, uh, every part of it in this video. So let's get started. The first question, the first part of the question rather, uh, asks us to write a static method that calculates and returns the sum of the entries specified in a 1D array. So here we have our array being passed in, and we need to return uh, its sum. So first what we should do is we should check if um, the array is null, just sort of simple error checking, or if the, array, uh, if the array's length is um, equal to zero. That would mean that it's empty. And if that's the case, we simply want to return zero, right? because then there's nothing to sum up. So now that we've checked for errors, we can go ahead and compute the sum by initializing a sum variable and setting it to zero. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make a for loop and we're going to iterate from zero to the length of the array. And we're simply going to add into their sum variable each element. And once we've done our addition, we're simply going to return our sum. and simple little error is fixed. Okay, so that should be our function to sum over the array. Another option, of course, would be to use a for each loop, and that would be, that would look something like this, for int x in r, that's going to go through and uh, iterate through r, uh, and the iterating variable is gonna be x, and that's going to contain the value of each element, and we're simply going to add it um, to the sum each time and then return the sum. Same code. So next what we're going to do is something very similar. The last one it's going to be row sums and that's going to sum up each row uh, in our 2D array. So we're going to do a little error checking first. We're going to check if R2D is null or if R2D is uh, zero length. If it is then we want to return something to indicate that there's an error. In this case, we're going to return null. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, initialize a variable to store our row sums in. Now, in this case, we're going to be returning an integer array, so we're going to go ahead and make one of those. Uh, integer array row sums. And we're going to go ahead and make that equal to a new int, and we're going to go ahead and make that the size of our 2D array. That'll be the number of rows in the array. And eventually we're gonna go ahead and return that. So I'm gonna put that here, just so the IDE stops complaining. And next step is going to be uh, simply summing up each row. Now keep in mind, we have this array sums function that we made earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. So we're gonna go ahead and make an iterating variable i, and we're gonna make that go from uh, zero to the length minus one of the 2D array. And we're gonna increment it each time. And what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna set uh, row sums at index i equal to um, the array sum, which is the function we just made earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste it. And we're gonna pass in r2d at i. That's going to be uh, any particular row, the ith row rather. So we're going to go ahead and use our function that we made before to sum it all up. So after we've done our summation, we're going to go ahead and return row sums, and that's our function. So our next, our last function rather, is going to be is diverse, and that's going to check um, if each element in row sum in the row sum is unique. And to, to do this, we're simply going to reuse our row sums function from before. In fact, I'm going to even borrow some of this error checking code from before. Actually, I guess that'll be true. So uh, we're going to go ahead and first compute the row sums, and we're going to reuse our function from before. So we're going to call make a little variable here with an integer array called row sums, and we're going to set that equal to row sums, and we're going to pass in r2d. 
that'll compute the row sums for us. Now we need to check that each element is unique. So I'm going to show you a few different ways to do it, depending on your level of familiarity with Java and its different packages. So the first one that I'm going to show you is a little bit complicated. It's something called the hash set. And what hash sets do is they keep track um, of unique uh, values that are added to the hash set. It's very similar to a, a set in mathematics, where if you have a duplicate, uh, if you try to union uh, two sets and they have duplicates, the duplicates aren't double counted. So I'm going to go ahead and initialize it like so. And we're going to go through our row sums using this for each loop. And we're going to add it to our set. And then to make sure that um, everyone's unique, what we're going to do is we're going to um, see if the size of our hash set is equal to our row sums uh, arrays length. If it is, then they're all unique. Otherwise, they're not all unique, and we have a duplicate, which means that we should return false. So we simply return this Boolean expression here. So I realize that could be a little bit complicated for um, like entry-level Java. This is just uh, if you already know what hash sets are. Now I'm going to go over a little more um, of a simpler method of doing this. So we're going to go back up here, and we still want the row sums, right? But now we're going to want to uh, make a for loop, and we're going to go ahead and make i go from 0 to uh, row sums dot length. We'll have it go uh, one each time. And inside of here, we're going to have a for loop. We're going to go from uh, j equals 0 to j is less than row sums dot length as well. And uh, once we're in here, we're going to check if i is equal i is not equal to j. And if it isn't, then what we're going to do, first I'm going to set a flag here. So we're going to start off this variable is diverse equal to true, and we're going to uh, return it at the very end. And if we ever encounter two numbers that are the same, we're going to set is diverse to false. So we're going to check if i is not equal to j, and if uh, row sums at i is equal to row sums at j. And if that's the case, we want to set is diverse to false. Notice that if we find two duplicates, is diverse is also going to be false, um, no matter what. So that works out very nicely. So if we go through this entire uh, outer for loop here, and it turns out that the array is diverse, then that means that um, is diverse is still set to true. We never reach this part of the code, and um, we're all good. So let's go ahead and run it. I have a little driver here that tests our code. And once we run it, we see that um, A1, an array, is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And we see that the sum is 10. That's good. That checks out fine. And here I made an array A2, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And the row sum is going to be 6, 15, and 24, respectively. And you can check for yourself that that's true. It looks very true. And then we check, and then we have um, is diverse is true, which is correct because those are all unique numbers. So those are a few different ways you could approach this problem. Thanks for watching.